I'm Chicano and this is paradise. Came clear across the world just so I can heal. God brought me here. I live on a remote secluded island. But I needed to come here to heal. You guys maybe, you guys didn't. You guys uh, need something else to heal. But whatever it is, you gotta do. You may be going through a divorce, loss of job, can't find your way in life. Um, but you know what you gotta do. It's in your conscious. That voice you hear, not that you literally hear, but that voice inside of you that's telling you what to do, that's God speaking to you. And you gotta do whatever that voice is telling you to do. Um, today I'm gonna talk to you guys about serial killers. And it's mostly because I grew up with serial killers. Not many people can say that, but I did. And two of them come to mind, two in particular, that when I started talking about them, if you grew up in LA during the 90s, like I did, um, you're gonna know about these dudes because these dudes put in work and uh, they lived in my neighborhood. I mentioned it uh, in other videos, but my neighborhood was crazy. And we don't have the fame that other neighborhoods do in, in LA because, you know, we don't have the rappers. A lot of the hoods that are famous in LA, that's because rappers came out of there and put the hoods on the map. But um, back in the 90s, especially the early 90s, man, my neighborhood was uh, the craziest. You're going to be like, hey, Rich, my neighborhood was crazy too. All right, well, I'm sure it was, but um, if you look at statistics, LA led the, the whole country in, in uh, homicides. And the little area that I grew up in, central Los Angeles, downtown Pico Union, that whole area, Westlake, Echo Park, you know, Exposition Park, all that, uh, Koreatown. Yeah, we led, we led the, the, the city in murders. So I'm going to post the exact uh, numbers down here so you guys could click on it, click on the link. But it was like over 2,000 murders in the whole city and my little area had uh, over 800. So that's more than a murder a day on average. And I mean, you would hear it. You would hear it. And these two dudes uh, were responsible for a lot of those. And this was, I would say, the most traumatizing um, event as far as uh, my PTSD is concerned because um, that was the first time that I felt fear like deep fucking seated fear um, and it's not like okay these dudes are gonna kill me but it was just like danger evil and just craziness is in my presence and the dudes that I'm talking about are Thumper from 18th Street and Silent from 18th Street. Um, this story goes like this. I must have been about 12 years old. Again, this is when all the madness was, was happening, when there was murders every day. And me and my homie were going to the store, the local liquor store where we used to get our candies and all that shit. And, you know, there were shots going on throughout the day. But this day in particular, as we're walking down 11th Street, um, headed towards Burlington Street from Bonnie Bray. Uh, there's Thumper and Silent next to a fucking Cadillac. Both of their shirts are soaked in blood. Both of them soaked in blood. And they're there like nervously, nervously um, talking to each other. Um, Lord knows what they were saying. But as we start walking past them, we turn around. We turn... Uh, towards where the Cadillac was. And there was a fucking body in back of the Cadillac, in the trunk, and they just had the trunk open. And 
I don't know what the fuck happened. Um, obviously, the dude got killed, but um, I don't know why. And this is the type of uh, terrorism that would happen in my neighborhood. And it would happen on a regular basis. I had a run-in with uh, Thumper um, as a kid. Um, nothing like directed at me, but it was directed at my group of friends. And I was terrified of that motherfucker. Um, for my research, I believe he went to Mexico um, to go, you know, work for the cartel or some shit, dude. But um, I think he got killed over there, which to me, it was like, it was just not a relief, but it was like a part of uh, my, my upbringing, my youth was gone with that because that's how that's how much this motherfucker uh terrorized pico union um both of them both of them were equally as fucking deadly and equally as vicious and these fools were soldiers um that's what 18th street had they had soldiers people that were just there to put in work for the barrio um people that were just there to kill to kill enemies and friends alike and i think that's what traumatized me the most about um where i grew up in about 18th street is the fact that they so readily so readily are um willing to kill their own homies and it happened later on i'm gonna go into stories about that and so for whatever reason for not following the rules not sticking to the code money issues whatever but they killed their own homies that was part of the game right there that's how you that's how you maintain your reputation and their reputation was something vicious so yeah i see it and um I, i'm like fuck i just w went straight to the store came back out and they were still arguing they had already closed the trunk and they were about to bounce they didn't even bother taking off their shirts that's how crazy it was back then in the 90s it's like you would see shit like that you know and that was one of the thing one of the events that really impacted me the most because I was a kid and I, even though I already seen a dead body at, by this time, I had already seen a limb get chopped off by this time. Um, like I never actually seen the murderers um, just hanging out like if, like nothing. They were just hanging out like nothing. Like they didn't just take a life. You know what I mean? And yeah, I think they were nervous, um, but not scared. They were nervous because and. To my knowledge, all I can think about is they're saying, where are we going to put this body? So there's going to be more to come on Thumper and Silent. But uh, that was my first uh, interaction. Well, not interaction. That was my first exposure to who these fools were. But it wouldn't be my last. And there's many, many dudes from 18th Street that were like that. But these two dudes uh, were the most vicious from my experience and they had their name literally struck fear and anyone and anybody that grew up in downtown la uh that's how fucking terrorizing and scary these motherfuckers were so that's my story about thumper and silent from 18th street let me know if you guys have similar stories man and i want to encourage you guys to share those stories because you don't know who could be hearing and we got to heal man we got to heal as a community of people that grew up in the hood that grew up in the barrio we got to heal man because a lot of us don't have money to go see a psychologist a psychiatrist um we don't have money for medication you know what i'm saying we don't have money to go to the doctor we don't even have insurance but we have ptsd you know we have it that's where the anxiety comes from sometimes that's where the depression comes in sometimes and if we don't do something about it you know something could happen something bad could happen and that's why i encourage you guys to tell your story because there's a lot of people out here exploiting um the pain and suffering that we went through and we lived that our moms went through and live our, our dads our family you know our friends we literally went through that shit and there's fools out here that ain't even from la you know they're not even with the whole culture but they uh research about it they study it and boom they go on youtube and start making these stories about 
gangs that they don't even know about. They don't even know how to pronounce their name, dog. You know, that's how bad it is with these fools. And so, um, you really want to let these fools tell your story? Come on now. If you went through some shit, if you're from South Central, if, you know, if you're from fucking Huntington Park, you know, you're from Cudahy, whatever, get on here, you know, on YouTube, let the world know about how things really went down. And in the process, you begin to heal. You will begin to heal because I'm healing, man. I'm in paradise. And if you guys go back to see my first video, I tell you guys how even though I had quote unquote made it, got the fuck up out of the hood, out of the States, um, I became real depressed. And you know why? It's because I wasn't doing this. You know, I wasn't helping people uh, express themselves and heal the way I'm healing. To me, I'm doing these videos um, to heal, to heal. And hopefully you guys can get something out of it too, because I know how it is to fucking live in fear. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to say, Oh my God, I didn't go out. No, dude, I live, I live the life, uh, fearlessly. I always did what I had to do, but subconsciously you always knew that at any moment your life can end, you know? It doesn't even have to be from a brave motherfucker. It could be from a coward ass motherfucker, you know? It could be from a hater. It could be from a lot of a lot of people, man. But there's people that grow up in nice parts of the country, nice, nice parts of town that don't have to deal with that uh, subconscious fear is what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I encourage you guys, do what you gotta do, man. Your story's important and people gotta hear it. So hope you guys enjoyed this story. Just a, another step in the right direction to help me heal. And um, thank you for watching. If you can, if you want to, subscribe. You know, that's gonna help me out. It's gonna help uh, push the message out there too for more people. And it's not just LA, man, because Chicago's LA now. Chicago now is what LA used to be in the 90s. So I know you motherfuckers are going through a lot of shit too. Get on here, man. And don't, don't go on here, you know, promoting that shit. Cause that's what got us here in the first place you know how, how the hell are you gonna be promoting shit like that man deep down inside you know it ain't right seek god let him guide you pray every day read the bible read the bible pray he listens and he answers prayers i'm living proof all right peace